Cool. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Annette. I work at, uh, as a head of developer relations at Hyperlane, and I'm very excited to be there um, today and speak about permissionless interoperability. Um, so, um, quick overview. Permissionless interoperability um, is uh, connecting, uh, is like empowering developers, builders, and pretty much everybody uh, in this space uh, and enabling cross-chain uh, communications. Uh, it also transfers the limitations of single blockchains uh, and enabling security um, by leveraging the security of different blockchains. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit about interoperability on the internet. Um, as um, you know, uh, blockchains communicate uh, together as well, uh, but like before blockchains started talking together, um, the internet protocols were what was before uh, the communications on the internet, and um, it pretty much goes back to the email clients. Uh, and so how the communications on the internet works. Um, it goes back to the internet networking, which is protocol um, that is standardized protocol that's defining the, pro, uh, the format of like handling, transmitting data, uh, packets, routing uh, them to the destinations, uh, to the clients itself, uh, to the addresses on the emails. Um, and that's pretty much how the communication on the internet works. Uh, so it all started by standardization, the communication on the internet. And then uh, we have also TCP IP, uh, which is the transmission control protocol, uh, which is enabling communications across the internet. Uh, and that's like how we connect web clients and servers together and that's like this is like this TCP IP is like the protocol which enables the communication uh, on the internet but it also is like very connected to blockchains as well as blockchains communicate together as well as the internet itself and TCP IP is the protocol um, that was built uh, on the top of the internet and this is pretty much like every messaging client out there uh, is using TCP IP, which is the standardized protocol. Um, so what is this have in common with blockchains? Blockchains talk together as well, um, and we are using the magic world, uh, which is interoperability, um, and that's pretty much how blockchains talk together. Um, and uh, so the interoperability is in blockchains uh, means pretty much that all blockchains talk together uh, and they're interoperable and we need to have interoperable blockchains in order to like leverage uh, the advantages of different blockchains as different L1s have different, uh, different L1s and different L2s have different um, specifications and like different apps, how they talk together, um, very similarly to how computer nodes talk um, using messaging clients uh, all around the world. Um, so, yes, blockchains talk together uh, and they're using transactions to talk together. Uh, and also every transaction which you send contains also a message that's included in every block, um, which you can also see uh, mainly in like NFTs, as NFTs have uh, metadata um, part in it and in the metadata are usually uh, the attributes of the NFT itself and that's where you can, that's like the best description of the metadata and that's the best description of how uh, blockchains talk together. Uh, on the next slide you can see how blockchains talk together. This is a screenshot from uh, Hyperlane Explorer which we built um, in-house and that's how you can see the best how um, cross blockchains talk together. Um, this is a random screenshot from some random transactions which I took a um, couple days ago uh, on the Explorer and as you can see this message um, is uh, decoded so under UTF-8 
uh, eight, but then when uh, you can encode that, uh, and then you can see this message says hello. Um, so this is like the basic overview how blockchains talk together. Um, at Hyperlane, uh, we build messaging protocol, which uh, we are using um, mailbox system. Uh, and the mailbox system works very similarly to like when you are sending a message between like in real life as you have like a letter and you want to send it over to a friend. So you put it in a mailbox and then the mail, like the post office, which we call like the relayer for us is the relayer. Um, and the other contracts which pass the sort of like the message itself to chain B. So this is like, this can be a great example of like having the origin chain Ethereum and then having the chain B that can be, for example, Avalanche. Um, and the message pretty much goes through the mailbox contracts, uh, through the layer, relayer, through the watchtower. Um, also, ISM's uh, interchain security modules check if the message is not um, malicious and then it delivers to the receiving contract. This is like very high um, overview of how uh, the message lifecycle works, but this is like a uh, very high overview. In docs, we have a much better documentation on how that works. Um, Let's quickly talk about the permission uh, permission versus permissionless blockchains. Um, as at Hyperlane, uh, we love to talk a lot about permissionless interoperability, and I feel like not many people understand what's the uh, what does it mean to have like permission blockchains. So like the permission blockchain is pretty much like closed source, uh, and nobody can really contribute to it. I don't really want to like shell any particular blockchain, but Ripple is a great example of a permissioned, permissioned blockchain as well as um, any like private blockchain. Um, so those, uh, you need the permissions in order to uh, access that blockchain uh, and then permissionless blockchains. Um, great example is Bitcoin or Ethereum, which you have no gatekeepers. There is no censorship. Um, it's open source and decentralized, it's free to use. Uh, free to contribute for everybody, free to fork, free to build on it, um, which we find very um, good. And that's like how the decentralization, uh, we support decentralization by using permissionless blockchains. Um, so building, uh, building interoperable projects, uh, why we should build interoperable projects, right? Like, um, you know, nowadays, um, Thankfully, we are coming to the stage where we are finding more projects to build on like more chains, uh, but it's better if we will build them um, via interoperable infrastructure uh, because building uh, projects on a single chain is not very sustainable. Also, building projects uh, with interoperable manner, with like interoperable advantages uh, means that um, you are taking advantage of a lower transaction fees as a, on a lot of like layer ones, the gas fees can be very high. And by uh, plugging the interoperable infrastructure, um, you're, you can lower the gas fees and take advantage of like different projects on the different layer ones or layer twos. Uh, you can use much more DeFi protocols and rollups and take advantage of a security on the different blockchains. Uh, we also meet a lot of projects that build their, that, that like du duplicate their own infrastructure on a different layer ones or layer twos, which is not always sustainable. Um, and it takes like a lot of money for projects to build um, the same infrastructure on a different layer ones and layer twos, or like pretty much like duplicate your own infrastructure on different chains and that's like kind of useless. Uh, but uh, sometimes projects also build their own custom bridge um, to bridge their native assets to like different chains which we find not always necessary. Um, permissionless interoperability um, allows you to connect, collaborate and build interchain applications. It's actually very simple uh, to build in, uh, permissionless interoperable applications and I'm just going to speak a little bit about how that works. Um, so 
anyone can uh, plug uh, hyperlink infrastructure to your to any project and um, which makes it interoperable with any EVM chain. We also don't speak about this really, so this is like for me a little time to announce that we are also uh, building Cosmos module as well, so you will be able to uh, connect uh, hyperlink or like connect any protocol to Cosmos chain as well very soon. Um, yay, thank you. Uh, so, how this all work or like how to make your project uh, interoperable, very simple. Deploy hyperlink infrastructure to your project. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, also, hyperlink is not a chain. Uh, which like um, our competitors usually have their own chain. It's just a contracts and you can enable instant interoperability. We are focused on the developer experience. So we are trying to make hyperlane uh, very simple, very easy to just like plug in uh, our infrastructure. And we are also very responsive on Discord. I know many projects um, are simply reaching out to us and if they need help and we're trying to be uh, make the developer experience very simple in terms of permissionless interoperability. Um, what are the benefits of permissionless interoperability? Uh, very quickly, um, it's very fast. Um, so permissionless interoperability enables you to have very simple uh, user experience as you don't need to bridge your native assets between the chains and you can like instantly use your app on a different chain. Uh, also modular security, um, take advantage of the modular security. We have uh, currently four modules per build, but you can also build your own based on the need of your app. Uh, and anybody can also build their own. Uh, it's permissionless, it's open source hyperlane. Uh, it's fully open source. Uh, we don't hide our code with like anybody. Um, so you can like build, um, just like add hyperlink contract to your apps. Um, and we started uh, supporting hyperlink. We started supporting Avalanche as well. So right now if you are building your app on Avalanche, you can simply plug hyperlink contracts to your app and connect your app with any of the nine EVM chains. And we are also supporting the Fiji testnet. Uh, so you can um, connect that with any of the nine um, supported chains, and that's pretty much it from my side. Uh, thank you so much, Avalanche, for inviting me to this conference. Thank you so much, Hyperlane, for sending me out, and it was a blast to um, speak at this conference. Uh, here's my handle, which you can find me on Twitter and Telegram. Just shoot me a DM. I'm very happy to like speak about anything. Check out our documentation. Um, if you want to like learn more of like how Hyperlane works, join the Discord and follow Hyperlane on Twitter. Um, any questions or do we not have time for it? Thank you. Okay. Yay. Hi there. Could you just tell me a little bit uh, about uh, the in-between piece, uh, you mentioned the, the smart contract uh, on the origin chain and the smart contract on the destination chain, but uh, in between, what, what does that kind of look like in terms of infrastructure? Uh, we're using like um, proof of stake mechanism to pass the messages and um, then it goes through like a real layer. So, I mean, pretty much hyperlink is like a locking bridge. So like uh, it logs on the origin chain and then it means one on one on the mm -hmm. destination chain and mm -hmm. that's like. No, that makes sense. And the the in between piece that decides the when the lock has adequate confirmation, um, like what does that protocol look like? Is it, it like an off chain entity? Yeah, um, it's off chain contract. Uh, it's like contract that is like off chain, but then it like verifies the information on chain. Okay, so it, it yeah, it kind of looks at the information on chain. Yes. And it waits for a certain amount of confirmations or? Yes. Okay, great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>